hot. All right? Oh, she's a babe. You know, she's hot. And all of a sudden, their mission, their purpose, their focus, all of a sudden that temptation of distraction comes in, you're like, whoo! And you're distracted right there. And it stays right there. You never get back on track. It's not like, hey, you want to go pray together? What about devotions? You get, hey, you know, I'll follow Jesus pretty hard. You want to come with me follow Jesus? It's not like that. It's like, hey, we'll go make up. You want to, you know, you know that, that's where it leads. That's where it goes. So I encourage you as a youth ministry, either don't date or date God. Okay? Don't date or date God. That's what I want. That's God's desire. That's my desire. And don't get distracted by the other person. So if you're not dating, just focus on God. Date God for the next four years. Amen. For the next few years that you're in high school, just date God. Date him like you've never dated him before. You know, I love Gwen and Benji's uh, uh, marriage. <laughs> Benji, I love Benji. All right? I love, I, love, I love their marriage. Their very first kiss was their wedding kiss. That's the only couple in my life that I've seen it do it so right. They did it so right. The first kiss was on the wedding day. That is going to be a strong, healthy marriage. Because their love was not based on obsession, on passion, on the physical. Their love was fully based upon God and their hearts. That's going to be a strong marriage. That's a marriage the enemy's not going to be able to do. <coughs> All right? I love it. I love it. There's a power in their marriage. I helped perform the marriage today first. I mean, there was the Holy Spirit was there if you were there. I mean, there was, there was just a, a mighty spirit of God in that, in that ceremony. You know why? Because God was so happy. God was so pleased. And he's going to bless them. He's going to bless, bless them the message for their obedience to him. Alright? So, I say that to say, I don't know why we like each other so much. Because there's so many things we don't understand about each other, so many things that annoy us about each other, but yeah, we can't get enough of each other. Alright, so don't date or date not. Number one and number two. Okay? Good. Can we move on? You guys want to hear more about guys and girls? Yeah. We'll save it for battle with sexes in the spring. Definition of what? Oh, definition of boys and girls. Um, Let's move on. All right. The last temptation I want to talk to you about tonight. The last temptation. There's the temptation of the desert. The temptation of the desert. We all have this temptation from time to time that tries to sway us. It tries to get us. and tries to tempt us to give up. We look out across our schools. We look out across our ministry assignments. Ministry teams that we're going to sign up for tonight at the end. We're, uh, we look out across these things and where there's much great passion and great excitement. And God's going to do great things and God's telling me to do this and God's placed it in my heart. And I'm ready and I'm going to go. And God, you're awesome and I'm awesome and we're going to do this together. And, and you know, we have this, this great excitement, this great desire. And we move out. And we move out in that leading. And we think we're going to make a huge difference. And then we get so far into that, usually not very far, maybe a couple of weeks, maybe a month, and we give up. Because we look out at that, that high school, that middle school, and we say, wow, there's so much sin. There's so many people that aren't listening. There's so many people that are into themselves and into everything else in the world. And how am I ever going to make a difference? And oh, I don't know where to start. I can't make a difference. So I'm just going to give up. Sit back. It leads to complacency. It leads to distraction. It leads to you doing absolutely nothing for the kingdom of heaven. It's the temptation of the desert. I made it up. That's what I call it. The temptation of the desert. Because when you're tempted that way, it leaves you in a desert. When you get to a desert, you look out, you're like, oh man, I'm not crossing that. It's so vast, it's so big, it's so dry, there's no water, there's no life. I'm not going to cross it. <coughs> when 
give up. God might be on the other side. Jesus himself might be on the other side. The girl or guy of my dreams might be on the other side. But I'm not crossing. It's too big. Temptation in the desert. You need to sit idle and do nothing. That's what we can't do. We cannot get into our ministry teams and a month down the road say, ah, oh, I don't really want to be part of this, I'm not going to come. Ah, I became the youth ministry, came to revolution like three weeks in a row, and, and you know, I just, uh, you know, I don't know, I, I don't know, I don't know. I'm going to quit. I'm not going to go anymore. Alright, I'm just going to skip this one. The next week goes, ah, maybe I'll skip this one. The next week, ah, oh, my friend wants me to go do something. Ah, maybe I'll skip this one. You know, we can't allow that desert to come into our lives. We've got to say, man, I'm going to conquer the desert. I don't care if I don't feel I'm passionate about what God called me. I don't, you know, I may be passionate this week. And three months down the road, I may, may not, not be passionate. But we have to choose right now, in this moment, you have to make a choice to say, man, it doesn't matter if I'm not passionate. I know God called me to this. I'm writing it down. Here's the time. Here's the day. Here's the hour that God called me to do this, and I'm going to do it. Whether I lose passion or not, I want to keep pressing forward. It's in those passionless times when you decide that in your heart that you're not going to stop, you're not going to quit, you're not going to back down, you're not going to be swayed from your mission. As you keep going, God speaks to you. God transforms you. Even when you're not thinking it, even when you're not feeling it, even when you don't have this, this little bubbly joy in your heart. Even if you don't feel God's presence around you. And you keep pushing forward because you know back there three months ago, that day, that time, you know that God called you to do that. And you keep pushing forward, and God's going to teach you so much. God uses those times in us. He uses those times to impact us and influence us. He uses those times to see what you're made of. Man, man, it's my, my boy, my boy Ryan. Man, is he going to keep pressing forward? I'm going to keep moving, even if I back off a little bit. I'm going to keep coming to me. Kind of build some character in us, doesn't it? Kind of build some discipline in us. Kind of build some desire and hunger and urgency in us. When God backs off, we're like, oh man, where'd God go? Where'd he go? i got to find him. i got to get to him. i got to go after him. When we have that type of attitude, oh man, God. You know, Riley in football. If he just said, oh, there goes that running back with the ball. <laughs> oh, I think he's going to score. That's okay. I'm just going to sit back. I don't feel like running. I don't feel like that. <laughs> kind of a line with I didn't know which is our end zone. You know? I'm just kidding, buddy. I don't even know which end zone is. But, all right, you know, that's the same thing in our spiritual lives. Here's his purpose. Here's his mission. His mission is to tackle the guy with the ball. Preferably meet behind the line of scrimmage and not down by the end zone. That's his mission. That's his purpose in that game and his role. If our purpose and our mission is not met, then we just begin to fade back. Man, we're not going to accomplish anything. Don't let the desert intimidate you. Don't let it destroy you. You get through it. You get past it. Keep moving. Temptation of the desert. Just to sit back. I think it's too big. You can't do it. So, when the enemy's really coming after you, you got to be encouraged. It means you are doing something right. When you're being tempted to get off track, when temptations of distraction are coming, temptations of complacency, big temptations of big deserts, temptations of guys and girls, all other temptations, there's a whole list of them. But when they start attacking you and the enemy's coming after you, man, just know you're doing something right. The enemy wouldn't be coming after you if you weren't a threat to his kingdom. If you were going to make a difference, right? So remember that. So how can we fight these temptations? First, we need a consistent quiet time this year. You have got to get alone with God. I don't care if it starts out with five minutes a day. You've got to get alone with God on a daily basis. When I don't, I feel so dry. But when I'm, man, when I'm alone, 